Okay, so in this type of question, your professor is asking you to draw this cyclohexane in the most stable conformation possible. Okay, so hey, he's giving you the 2D planar conformation, and he wants you to translate this into the 3D chair conformation that's the most stable. Okay, so hey, this gives a lot of people trouble, but it's actually pretty simple. A common misconception that screws a lot of people up is that they try to assign these wedges and dashed lines to mean either axial or equatorial. And let me just tell you now that whether you are a dashed line or a wedge line, a dashed line or a wedge line, this has absolutely nothing to do with whether that substituent is axial or equatorial. I'll say it again, whether you are a dashed line or a wedge line, this has absolutely nothing to do with whether you are axial or an equatorial substituent. Do not try to look at this planar conformation and assign an axial or equatorial conformation to these substituents. It does not tell you whether the substituents are axial or equatorial. What it does tell you is what direction these substituents are going to be pointing in. So what you can do is assign a direction to these dashed and wedge lines. All right, so check this out. You can say that a wedge line, a wedge line means that the substituent is pointing in the upward direction and a dashed line is pointing in the down, downward direction. Or you can flip that around and choose to say that a wedge line stands for pointing down and the dashed line stands for pointing up. It doesn't matter what direction you assign to what, just as long as you stay consistent, okay? So I'm just gonna say that a wedge line, a solid wedge line like this, this stands for pointing up, And a dashed line like here and here, this stands for pointing down. And you could do it the reverse of this also. It doesn't matter. This is just how I got used to seeing it, okay? Okay, so let's see how this applies to drawing the chair conformation, all right? So the first thing you're going to do when he gives you this type of problem, you're going to just draw a blank chair like this. The next thing you're going to do is assign whether a wedge means up or down. And we've already said that a solid wedge in our example is going to mean that it's going to be pointing up and a dash means that it's going to be pointing down. Okay, you can do it whichever way you want in your example. This is how we're doing it here. Okay. But the last thing I want you to do before you start putting substituents on this chair is to label your carbons. Okay, so hey, remember you can number these carbons whatever way you want. Just stay consistent with which atoms are on which carbon. So let's label our 2D conformation first. And you can start numbering from whichever carbon you want on this ring, okay? So I'm just gonna start from this carbon that has the OH on it arbitrarily, okay? So I'm gonna label this carbon, carbon number one, and I'm gonna work my way clockwise around this ring. It doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? So hey, carbon number one, this is carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and carbon number six. Okay, cool. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with this chair. And once again, you can start from whichever carbon you want on this ring, and you can number the chair in any direction you want, clockwise or counterclockwise, okay? So hey, I'm just gonna start from this carbon here and work my way clockwise around this thing, okay? So hey, here's carbon number one, here's carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and carbon number six. Okay, cool. Now we're ready to start adding substituents, okay? So, hey, let's look at our planar conformation and see which carbons have what substituents on them. And hey, we see an OH on carbon number one and a CH3 on carbon number two. So you guys, you better end up with an OH on carbon number one and a CH3 on carbon number two of your chair also. Because remember, we're just translating this 2D planar conformation to this 3D chair conformation. Okay, cool. So we know that an OH is going to go on this carbon, and we know that a CH3 is going to go on this carbon. But the question is, do I make those substituents axial or equatorial on those carbons? And so check this out, you guys. Do me a favor, and whenever you're putting substituents on a chair, draw out bonds going in both the axial and equatorial positions. What I mean is, hey, we're putting an OH group on this carbon, right? So let's draw the bonds going in both the axial and equatorial positions. And how do we do this? Well, we said that whichever way the chair points, that's the direction we draw the axial bond. And this carbon, 
is pointing in the upward direction. So we draw the axial bond pointing straight up like this. Not diagonally up, but straight up, remember? Okay. And the equatorial bond is going to be pointing horizontally to the right and slightly down like this. And sweet, we're all ready to add our OH group to this carbon now. But which position are we going to add it to? The axial or the equatorial? Well, an easier way to think about this is which one of these bonds are you going to add it to? The one pointing up or the one pointing down? So in this case, this axial is pointing up and this equatorial is pointing in the downward direction. And I know it's only pointing slightly down, but hey, compared to the axial, this equatorial is pointing more down than it is up, right? Okay, awesome. Here's the cool part. Remember how we assigned that a wedge, a wedge meant that it's going to be pointing up and a dash means pointing down? Here's where we're going to apply that. Okay, so in the planar conformation, there is a dashed wedge to the OH, meaning that this OH is going to be pointing down in our chair. So which position are we going to be putting the OH in? On this bond that's pointing in the upward direction, or this bond that's pointing downward? Well, hey, dash means down, dash means pointing down, right? So that would mean we'd put this OH on the bond that's pointing down. So we'd put this OH here. And awesome, you guys, you just translated this dashed OH to a downward pointing OH on our chair. And just to be complete here, you guys, let's fill in this hydrogen on our chair confirmation. And this hydrogen has a solid wedge to it, which means it's going to be pointing up on our chair, which means it's going to be pointing up on this carbon. Okay, so this hydrogen would be pointing up since it's a wedge. Okay, cool. So we've added our substituents to carbon number one. Now let's do carbon number two. And we see that there is a wedged CH3 on carbon number two. And we assigned a solid wedge to mean that that substituent is going to be pointing up on our chair. So we better put this CH3 substituent on a bond that's pointing up on our chair, okay? So hey, if we draw out the axial and equatorial bonds for this carbon, we'd see that, hey, the axial is going to be pointing straight down and the equatorial bond is going to be pointing slightly up and to the right. Okay, so we see that this is a wedged CH3, and that means it's going to be pointing up in our chair. So tell me, which of these two bonds is this CH3 going to go on? This bond that's pointing straight down, or this bond that's pointing slightly up? The bond that's pointing slightly upward, right? Okay, cool, so let's put our CH3 there. And that means this hydrogen with this dashed wedge is going to be pointing downward on this axial bond. And awesome, you guys. You just flawlessly translated this planar cyclohexane to this chair cyclohexane. But before we celebrate, let's just check to make sure this chair is in the most stable form. Are the most substituents equatorial? Are the biggest substituents equatorial? And the answer to these questions is yes. The OH is equatorial and the CH3 is equatorial. This compound is in the most stable conformation. If it wasn't, all you would do is a chair flip to change all the equatorials to axial and all the axials to equatorial, but we don't need to worry about that here because the biggest substituents are already equatorial. And oh my gosh, you guys, that took forever to show you how to do that. But trust me, it's just because I was telling you every little detail about how to draw this. When it actually comes down to doing a problem like this, it will only take a couple minutes tops. Take home message for this translating planar to chair confirmation stuff. Do not pay attention to whether a substituent is axial or equatorial. Only pay attention to whether a substituent is pointing up or pointing down. If it happens to be axial on the chair, then cool. If it happens to be equatorial, then cool. You don't care. You only care about whether substituent is pointing up or down. And if it's pointing up in the planar conformation, it better be pointing up in the it better be pointing up in the chair also, and vice versa for substituents that point down. The only time you care about whether substituents are axial or equatorial is when you are trying to determine the most stable conformation of the compound. So draw your chair 
first with his substituents pointing up or down, worry later about whether it's in the most stable form. And that's so crucial, you guys, let's write that down. 